Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're doing a follow-up video to a review that I did about a year ago, and that was on the 8-Bit Doe USB receiver. And what this device lets you do is connect up a whole bunch of different controllers and get them to work with different types of devices. So for example, you could hook up a PlayStation 4 controller to your Switch and have it work like a Pro Controller. You can take out the old Wii U Pro Controller, pair it up with your Switch, but also with your PC. It was a really neat hardware translator device that lets you use the controllers you want on the platforms that you want. And I'll put a link to that video down below in the video description if you want to check it out. And the other day I needed another one of these because as some of you know, I've been experimenting with the Mr. Project, which is an FPGA based uh, retro uh, game console essentially that plays a lot of the originals from the 80s and 70s. And I needed a wireless controller and these devices are perfect for that. But I found that there was another device out there that I've been meaning to pick up called the Magic NS, which is very similar from a company called Mayflash. In fact, I believe the guts of this were manufactured by Mayflash. They both cost the same at about $20, but this one is slightly different. And I'll talk about the differences between the Mayflash device and the 8-bit dough device in this review so you can make a proper decision for what you might need to purchase. And we're gonna get into that in just a second. Now, I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that the 8-bit dough device came to the channel free of charge from them about a year ago when we reviewed it. But the Mayflash adapter here, I paid for with my own funds. Now, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see how these devices differ. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware differences. They look very different from each other because 8-Bit Doe, of course, has these great industrial designers that always make their stuff look really cool. Uh, this one, of course, looks like some Super Mario Brothers bricks. Uh, the Mayflash here is a little bit more utilitarian, but it does have something the 8-Bit Doe device does not, which is a USB port. And this allows you to plug your controllers directly into the adapter and then into your target device, whether it's a Switch, a PC, or a Neo Geo Mini, or your Raspberry Pi. Uh, you can directly connect your controllers and get all of the translation benefits that this device provides you. We'll take a look and see if there's any latency advantages to that in a few minutes. Another thing that I noticed with the Sony controllers is that it's a lot easier to pair with the Mayflash because it can develop that relationship with the controller through the USB without having to go through the Bluetooth pairing process. And on PS3 controllers, uh, the 8-bit Doe device requires you to actually connect it up to a PC first, load up some software, set up the relationship, and then move it over. You don't have to go through that extra step on the Mayflash for PS3 controllers, and the PS4 controllers will also pair up in the same way. Uh, the other thing the Mayflash has is a mode change button on the device itself, which allows you to go from direct input to switch to X input, even the Neo Geo Mini here, by just pushing a button on the device. Uh, the 8-bit Doe has different modes as well. It supports many of the same modes the Mayflash does, but if you wanted to go from direct input, for example, that you might be using on your Android device or your Raspberry Pi over to X input for Windows 10, you have to make that change of mode on the controller that is already paired with it versus just pushing a button, which I found to be a lot simpler on the Mayflash. Uh, the Mayflash also has an LED light on the back here that will light up and indicate to you what mode it is in so you can pick the right mode for the device that you are looking to play around with. Uh, it has two switch modes actually. Uh, one is regular switch mode, the other one is a Switch Pro controller emulation. I would of course recommend going for that Switch Pro emulation which is the uh, purple light there. Uh, so let's begin by pairing up a PS4 controller with my Switch and then we'll look at a few other things. So let me get the camera zoomed out and the device plugged in and let's see what happens. Now on the switch, before you plug everything in, uh, you wanna make sure that your pro controller wired communication option is set to on. Uh, this will allow the uh, Mayflash device here to communicate with your switch through its USB port. And as you can guess, you need to have it docked for this to work or maybe get some kind of USB-C adapter for when it isn't docked because it, of course, does require USB even to work wirelessly. Now I'm gonna plug it in here to one of the two USB ports on the side of the dock. And as you can see, mine is lighting up green because the last device I had it plugged into was a PC. 
Now the 8-bit DOE device apparently will switch automatically when it's plugged in, even if it's in a different mode. Uh, but here on the switch, we're going to have to hold this button down and wait for the light to change. So it just went off and just went red, uh, which is a switch mode, but that's not the mode we want. Uh, so I'm going to keep hitting the button here until it turns purple. There we go. And now we can move forward. Now what I'm going to do with this PS4 controller, rather than try to pair it up via Bluetooth, I'm just going to take out the USB cable here and plug it in. So let's do that now. And what will happen here when I do that is the controller will light up and uh, within a second or two it starts working. That is it. It is ready to go. Now with the PS4 and the PS3 controllers on the Mayflash, once they're connected with the physical cable, they will also work once they are disconnected wirelessly with no additional pairing. So right now we are paired up. I'm the guy on the left here running around the shoot 'em up here and, and uh, everything's working just fine. Uh, now I'm going to pause the game here for a second and pull out the cable. Now what will happen is the controller will shut off, but if I just hit a button here, it will immediately find the Mayflash here and pair back up with it. i got to hit the PS button there. And now I can resume my game and continue playing wirelessly. Uh, again, pretty seamless here to get uh, that controller paired up. Uh, likewise here, I could pause the game, grab my PS3 controller, and maybe try to set that one up. Again, the process of getting a PS3 controller set up on the 8-bit dough was a little bit more uh, work because, again, you did need to have that PC intermediary. Uh, but as you can see here, we are already paired up and uh, things are working. And if I uh, pull the cable off of this and wait a second for it to reconnect, again, we are connected up wirelessly. So if your intent is to use PlayStation controllers on your Switch, uh, this is going to be a little bit easier than what I experienced on the 8-bit DOE device. Now, on both the 8-bit DOE device and the Mayflash, you'll get motion controls with your PS4 controller. So, for example, in Super Mario Odyssey here, I can uh, have the controller go up there to throw his hat up in the air, and then I can do some of the other motion moves here as well. So, pretty cool stuff. It seems to work pretty well on both devices, and it's also nice to feel the rumble motor here working uh, on the controller, too. It really gives you that... A uh, nice pro controller feature set with a, another form factor that you might prefer or be more familiar with. Now, both the 8-bit DOE and the Mayflash controller do not support multiple players per device. However, on the Mayflash, it looks like I'm getting more than one controller connected at a time. However, they're only controlling player one. Uh, so I've got Mario running around here, and I can actually have him jump here with the other uh, controllers. So that's kind of weird, right? And then I said, I wonder what happens if I plug in this Xbox One controller now. Uh, this is a wired connection we're going to make up here with this uh, Microsoft controller. And now I'm controlling Mario with the Xbox controller, but I can still jump with the PlayStation controller. So that might be kind of fun to have, you know, maybe one player uh, run him and the other one jump him. But nonetheless... Uh, if you have four players, you will need four devices to get those multiple controllers to work. Uh, that is the same issue you'll encounter here with the 8-bit DOE adapter, too. Now, both the Mayflash device and the 8-bit DOE device play very nicely with Windows, and you can get some controllers connected you otherwise would not be able to. Uh, so, for example, I've got my Wii U Pro controller here connected up. It's working just fine in X input. Uh, with my little controller testing app here. Even the vibration motors are working here too, so that's pretty cool. And then I also have my PlayStation 3 controller hardwired to the Mayflash here at the same time. And again, all of those buttons are mapping properly too. And you'll notice here that the PS3 controller has analog triggers too, which are properly working with the Windows device. Now, normally you could just connect up your PlayStation controllers to your Windows PC, but you often need an additional software layer to translate the controller over to X input on both the 8-bit DOE and the Mayflash device. Uh, they will handle all of that for you inside the hardware, so there's nothing else to install. You just plug it in and you're off and running. But there are some trade-offs with latency. Now, how we test latency here on the channel is that we do a real-world hands-on latency test by shooting a screen at 240 frames per second, pushing a button on a controller, and seeing how long it takes for that button push to get registered on screen. And I did a lot of testing of both of these devices. They perform about the same, but they do introduce a little bit of lag and latency into the mix. So, for example, on my LG OLED TV using the Nintendo Switch, the Mayflash adapter uh, was coming in around 100 milliseconds using the Xbox One controller uh, connected over a direct USB connection. 
Uh, the other connection over Bluetooth was marginally slower, but really probably within the margin of error. That one came in around 108 milliseconds to the May flash. Uh, the switch controller itself connected wirelessly. I uh, was doing about 72 milliseconds. Uh, the switch does have a bunch of latency that it introduces to the mix. And of course, your own TV or display might introduce a little bit there as well. Uh, so you can see you're going to be pushing yourself over the 100 millisecond number here with either the Mayflash or the 8-bit dough on the Nintendo Switch. There's some processing going on to get those controllers mapped to the Switch and what it needs, and that of course will impact your performance a bit. Now on my gaming PC with a 144 hertz monitor, we were seeing about 60 to 64 milliseconds of latency with both the 8-bit dough and the Mayflash using a PS3 or a PS4 controller, and that latency was the same wired or wireless in the case of the Mayflash. Now, if I hook up my Xbox One controller directly to that PC, we get about 40 to 44 milliseconds of latency. So you can see we're getting about a 20 millisecond overhead here, uh, more or less, and I'm guessing that is due to some of the translation that's going on when you're trying to convert uh, this PS3 controller's output to what X input expects. So just be prepared for that. If you are very sensitive to controller lag, I think you'll definitely notice it on the switch where you get into 100 millisecond territory. Uh, but on the PC, 64 isn't all that bad, although you'll get better performance by hooking up an Xbox One controller directly to it. Uh, but in all cases, the 8-bit Doe device and the Mayflash performed almost exactly the same. So the big question is, which of these two devices is the better of the two? And I think if you are swapping out controllers frequently and you're swapping devices around frequently, the Mayflash has the edge. It is easier to configure, especially for your Sony PS3 controllers, because all you need to do is connect up the USB to get that pairing relationship set up. It was just a much faster and more efficient process, especially if you're using Raspberry Pis and Android stuff and misters, for example. I also like the fact that I can switch modes here with a button push versus having to use a paired controller to make that change. So overall, a more efficient device here insofar as configuration is concerned. Otherwise, they perform about the same. So if you like the 8-bit dough stuff, you're not gonna get much better with the, uh, the Mayflash here from a performance standpoint, but if you are heavily swapping stuff out all the time, I think the 8-bit dough is not as good at that as the Mayflash is. Otherwise, you'll uh, not have a bad experience with either one of them. Uh, controller compatibility is just slightly better on the Mayflash because it does support USB controllers. So if you have an Xbox 360 controller, for example, or an older Xbox One controller that doesn't support Bluetooth, you can plug those into here and use them on your devices, which you can't do on the 8-bit dough, but otherwise compatibility is about the same, and I will put a list of compatible controllers down below in the video description. Let me know what you thought down in the comment stream, and we will follow up if we need to. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.